Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And today I thought I would share with you some of the hobbies I've been doing during this self-isolation, self-isolation, <laughs> self-isolation quarantine time. So I thought, apparently I'm sleepy. Um, Cause I live alone other than with my two cats. And so I was, you know, I have to keep myself busy. I have not been out shopping, leaving the house. Um, you know, I have run to the Dollar Tree on occasion here and there just to pick up essentials or I do my grocery pickup. If you've seen my vlogs, you'll know that. But hobby wise, I thought I would show you some of the stuff I've been working on and how I store a few things. Thought that would be fun. So the first thing I'm working on is a scrap blanket. So you know I knit, this is actually crochet. And what this is, is all, well, it started off as all leftover yarn. And this is called a corner to corner crochet. I don't know a lot of crochet, but I do know this stitch. So it's pretty fair, you know, decent size blanket. You, it grows as a triangle. And then when it's as wide as I want, then I square it off at the bottom. So this is where I add the rows. And each color here is just different yarns, just different yarns that I have left over from projects until I bought an advent calendar from Opal Yarn and it came with these little mini skeins and I've been adding some of those. So what I do is I ball up the yarn and then this is still some scrap and I just, like right here is where I've added, ooh, don't go pulling out your crochet, Lori. This is where I'm working. So I'll come to here. I'll add one more little half shell and then go up to the next row. And then I crochet back this direction. And it, it takes a fair amount of yarn and time now to get to either side. But it's so soft and squishy because this is all wool. Either 100% wool or 85 is the most... Yeah, 85 would be the sock yarn that does have a little bit of um, nylon in it or non-wool. But most of this is all wool. So, and it's too big for its bag. But I did last night as I balled up another. So this pretty color is like earth tones. And then I tie them together and keep adding. So I'll make this ball bigger before I switch over maybe. So this is something super easy to do, sit on the couch. It's great in the winter because the blanket's getting so big that it like makes my legs warm. I think I started this three or four years ago. I mean, it's just, it's an ongoing, you just know I have to get scraps to use it, but this is like years in the making. And I work on that and then, you know, I may spend six months and not, but I collect all my scraps and then I put them in the bag and use them. So that is one thing that I've been doing and I will show you what these little, they're called uh, mini skeins, but this is from Opal Yarn. And my advent calendar, I got it for two years, came with 25 of these. They're not named. They're just little, you know, yarns. Here's one. And this is what they look like knit up. Um, they sell stripe. Now these are wider stripes because there's only 36 stitches on here. Most socks, adult socks would be like 58 to 64. But what I'm making with this, and here's the, the little mini skein that I'm using for this one, is going to, and I'm gonna make a couple of them, but it's a kick stick for my cats. Um, and I have made them little tiny socks and stuffed them with um catnip and fill fiber fill but this one is going to be a it's called a kick stick and it will be like a tube sock basically um it's just one long tube and then i'll fill it with some catnip and fiber fill and make sure i sew it up on each end and then they can play with it so i thought let's start christmas knitting and this is just mindless knitting in the circle until I get, and I have a fair bit. I think these, let me see I'm, if it tells me. These are 15 grams and I happen to have a scale handy. If I can find a book. 
I'll tell you how many grams I've used already because doesn't everybody want to know that? All right, we're at zero. So this is sock weight yarn, and this is exactly 15 grams. And let's see, I've done half of this maybe, so I would say, yeah. There's eight grams, so I'm going to make it double this length for them and then I'll bind off any extra will go into my blanket so I and honestly I started this last night while watching TV just relaxing upstairs in bed getting ready for sleep and I started it and then this is how far I got it's just mindless round and round knitting and these are called DPN needles double point so if you're not a knitter they have a point on both ends and this is how you would knit in the round make a tube one way there's several ways but this is my preferred method and so it's it's like a sock it's a tube and then you just go round and round and round so I knit here's my yarn so I would knit these 12 stitches and that needle comes off that's on and then I go to this one and this one and I just keep it just corkscrews all the way up until I'm ready to stop and then this is a rib edge and I'll do exactly the same thing on the other end and I will stitch it shut on one end stuff it and I will show you that whole process but first I have to make my tubes and I thought I would make one for the boys and then my sister-in-law's cat needs one so I'll make tig one and let's store in just this little bag um this is typically my sock bag it has my sock pattern that I always have to refer to when I do the heel and it houses my double points and then I just throw yarn in it and I finished the socks that were on here so I worked on that that's a nice like sit in bed watch tv kind of thing excuse me it's been a long day guys um my other knitting project is this I'll show you what it's gonna look like this is a one of three panels it's gonna be a plaid and the actual pattern is called plaidaptation um so the colors I chose for this is this deep purple and this is Miss Babs yarn so I have this deep purple and then this gray for the accent and then this green is going to be the other accent it's not this I, I have made this pattern before but this is not the um sorry i got my yarn all tangled up this is not the weight yarn that i did for the original so i have to do a little bit of math but it's fine so and if you see these grooves going up that's where the vertical stripe is going to go Give me a second. What's in here? Oh, my other project. Um, this is the finished product. It's a poncho. So those channels I showed you will be these vertical stripes. Now, I don't have as much of the gray and green, so I won't have this many. It'll be mostly solid purple with some vertical striping, but this is three of those panels sewn together. So I'm working on the first panel and the reason I have the scale, um, I'm going to try to make this with just the yarn I have. So I'm having to weigh it, um, to know when to stop with each color for the one panel. And then I will be, as long as I, have enough of finish of that one panel then I'll know exactly how much to use on the other two so it's just a kind of knit and way as I go to make sure that I have enough of this yarn because this is all hand dyed yarn I will never find the same color again it's and I've had it for years hi bobs what you doing and oh I stored my knit this knitting project because I leave it at my computer desk and when I'm doing some overtime and answering telephones if it's slow, I can just knit on this while I wait for a call. But this basket my mom's cousin brought, and I believe she made it. And the only issue, ugh, Wellington or Alex got a hold of it, and, but that's okay. But I keep my knitting in there, and it just makes me happy to look at it because it's a handmade basket. Isn't that awesome? I love stuff from my people, my family. I love it. And then I have in my Halloween bag, 
and I think I've showed you this, but maybe not, is called a sock head hat. And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. If you're a knitter, you know about Ravelry. And you just knit and knit and knit. This is, I'm still working on the elastic band here. It's called a ribbing. So I'm working on that. And then when that gets long enough, it'll just be straight knit around, just like the tube of the socks. And this is the yarn. And I bought this yarn at Joanne. It is Patton's Croy. And this is 75% wool, 25% nylon. It's sock weight yarn. But that's the coloring, if you can see that. The coloring in the stripes over here in this sock. Let me see. You may not be able to see it. But if I were to make a sock, that's how the striping would go. This is called self-striping yarn as well because and it's how they dye the yarn. It self-stripes when you're knitting it. So I'm not changing the skein. I just knit, 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 and as a new color comes, it creates a stripe. It's a whole dyeing process. It's very labor-intensive. I've tried it, trust me. Um, so this on the pattern needs to get to be about four to six inches, and then it'll be a slouchy hat, and it will take almost a whole hundred grams of sock weight yarn, which is different than like worsted weight yarn. Sock weight yarn is thinner than that. And that's what I'm making my scrap blanket out of. So again, when I'm done with this, any scraps of yarn that I have left, I will put on my blanket. And that's how the blanket goes. That's the whole point of it, is to use up all the scraps. And I have, I think I have a fair amount left upstairs that I just haven't added yet. And then I have some of those little mini skeins. But my goal for 2020 is to get it as wide as it's going to go. By the end of the year we'll see if that works i would love for it to be able to fit on my queen size bed but if it's just a couch blanket i would be happy with that too so i have that and that is my three knitting projects i try not to have more than three knitting projects on the go um i don't like a lot of i like to finish things it feels good to finish things but like this is something i could take with me to in my room that hat I can take it on the go I can take it to the doctor I can take it for lunch at work I don't have to think about it it's just knitting in the round and this is the kind of projects that I need right now the same thing with this it's just the only thing that I have to remember is to do these on the knit side I purl these and on the purl side I knit them that's it so this is just back and forth knit one way purl the other knit one way purl. this is very mindless the only thing with this that i have to think about is where i want these stripes so there will be another gray stripe this size and two green but i want them kind of sporadic like i don't want them like even stripes i just want them kind of all over the place so i need to decide when i'm going to put the next stripe in which will be green and then go back and do one more gray and one more green. I've already worked out that I that will be enough. I'll have enough of these two colors left. And then it's just making sure I have enough of this purple to do it. I think I will. And if I don't, then I'll make it a really long, like, pashmina wool, like, wrap. It won't go to waste. If I find that it, I don't have enough, I'll just make a super long rectangle. And that'll become like a wrap. And it'll be nice and warm in the winter time, which is the goal, right? Hey. Okay. Now, one of my other projects that I've been working on is some sewing. So, and I did have some questions. I am not making these masks to sell. I don't have the raw materials. I was given by my sister-in-law some elastic to make a bunch for the Navy and then, so I utilized all of that. And when I delivered those, she gave me enough to make a couple of family members. She had a little bit of scraps of the elastic left. So I made a couple more um, that'll be given to my brothers and uh, sister-in-law. But I did make a different kind. And look at that fabric she sent me. And that's the other thing. Like my stores are out of the materials. I can't get elastic. Um, fabric is, you know, I'd have to wait in line for an hour. It's just too much right now. But anyway, so this is, uh, macaroons. And she just brought me this fabric. 
and all the materials actually god love her she brought me the interfacing and the elastic it just goes on like that now and if you're wearing these masks you need to remember they have to be washed every time you wear it so don't leave them in your car um bring them in and launder them you know with your regular laundry and dry them so i had to deliver some of those i made a this is all I had left, so I made a few to deliver to my some of my family members that they didn't have any masks. I don't know why, but they didn't. So I was like, well, I have enough materials to help the brothers out. So, yes. And then I have a couple things I finished. I know, I'm so excited. Um, and I can tell you, let me get my little book out. I keep a book, which I need to knit or uh, cross stitch something on the front um of my projects when i start them and when i finish them and then like what kind of flosses i use what the fabric was just all the details about the project so this project here is called a red cottage now obviously nothing is getting framed or finished right now because i don't have any materials to do all of that stuff but i finished it isn't that so fun? And I'm going to put it in a navy blue frame. And I think that just is so pretty for summer. This is, like I said, it's called a Red Cottage. It's by Plum Street Samplers. I started it March 14th. And I finished it on April the 3rd. So this was my first COVID, really, COVID uh, stitch and finish. And I need to get an 8 by 8 frame for it. I want a pretty wide frame that's navy and if it's not navy blue i'll paint it navy blue but that's what i want and so it'll get stretched and framed for summer i think that is perfect i love 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 this house and then did you see this little tiny bird house it's to match the regular house oh come on come on that little and the little tiny plant next to it oh adorable i love that so i finished that during the COVID apocalypse. Let me put this away. I'm trying not to get these two mucked up before I'm able to get them finished. And then this next project, here's my note page on that. And I even shrink a little picture. Um, was started on April 3rd and I finished it April 26th. And it's called the Suffrage Act um, from 1920, and I finished it in 2020, which is awesome. And it's about women's right to vote. So it says vote. There's some stars. It, the date's 1920. And I started, like I said, on April 3rd, finished it on April 26th. I have it. This is a 32-count mocha-colored Belfast. I did not dye this. This is how it came. So I think this is going to become a pillow. If I can find some like antique looking fabric, I want to make like a pillow or I guess I could frame it too, but I think a pillow would be fun. So I'll let you see it one more time. Look at those bricks. They were everything to stitch at the bottom. And I used this yarn. It's from Classic Color Works. It's called Cherry Cobbler. It's an overdyed, so if you know about yarn, it's floss like DMC, but then they put other dye on top of it so it looked like brick. And then I also did her dress, which I don't really see the overdyed color in her dress as much as I do the brick. This was supposed to be white with some cream in it, but I didn't really see it when I stitched it up. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. And then the rest is just DMC floss for that. Now, I haven't... I don't know if I brought it down here with me. I am working on a cross stitch. I don't think I brought it with me. That um, it was a free, yeah, it's upstairs. It was a free printable. A lot of the designers, if you do needlepoint and you go on to Instagram and do be, hashtag be well and stitch, there's a lot of designers that put out free um Free patterns for this coronavirus stay at home and stitch and kind of support your local needlework stores so I was doing I started one of those and then how do I 
thought I would show you real quick how I store. I gotta move some stuff here. How I store my needlework stuff. So in life in general, like my craft room has a lot of craft. I have yarn everywhere. And I'm actually, because of work, we're going to be working at home more than not, even when we're released back, which in Ohio is the fourth. We could technically go back to our offices, but our bank said, no, we're not doing that. And the government in Ohio, our governor and medical professionals are saying, if you can stay home, stay home. Like this is, if you have to go to work, go to work. But if not, you should just stay home and be safe. So that's what we're going to do for my job. So my plan when the stores and everything open i'm gonna have to get an actual desk from my craft room and i need to do some rearranging to make it so that i can work in there because i've never worked from home so that's just going to require some more purging but so i decided when i started this i was i was not going to go nuts and this is the extent of all of my needlework stuff it's most of it there's a some trim ribbons and stuff upstairs, but I use that for lots of things, but this is it. And I'm proud of myself that I can contain it all in one container because things can get a little out of hand, but I'll show you what I have. Um, these are called file envelopes or floss organizers. There's a brand name called Floss Away, but they're just a zip top baggie, sort of but they have holes punched in them at the bottom. So you can put your floss, you can write on it what's in it, and then your floss stays safe. And I'll show you, so cause some floss can get kind of expensive. DMC, not expensive, it's 50 cents. I'm not so overly concerned about that, but I have some more expensive floss that I bought for my next big project. And so I grabbed these to keep it under control. And then, I grabbed one of these and this is my needle <laughs> threaders. I just break them. They're not expensive. This was, I think a 25 pack for $3 and 99 cents. Here's the thing. I get 25 of this at Joanne. I paid three 99 for one and it broke just as fast as I break these. So I just bought this. And so I keep them just so they don't get lost. And I only usually have one or two out at a time. So I think I have one in here, yeah. Here's one. I even have some Dollar Tree scissors in here. This is a Notions pouch I made, and it'll, I'll show you what it matches in a moment. But when I get this big project out, all my little Notions will go in that. This pouch I got at Maryland Sheep and Wool a couple years ago. When, and there's cat fur all over it. And this is mostly just um, my knitting notions. I have some hand lotion in here. I have a pair of scissors in here. And then my needles. And a sock pattern. Apparently I have sock patterns everywhere. I just need the heel turn thing. But this goes with my knitting stuff. If I were to go, on, go out with my knitting, I would just grab this. It has all the things I need for knitting. And then all of the stuff that I'm using to store, I got at the Dollar Tree, which is awesome. So these containers that we that I picked up, there's two. Well, one thing is not. I have two of them. I have some more upstairs, but I only need two for this. So this holds some trim that I got specifically for finishing on clearance. Actually, all this stuff was on clearance. And then I have some sequins for projects. So I keep all that together. This is all uh, floss. DMC floss from projects. Uh, you see that? And then in here, I have all kinds of things. In here, um, rings to hold my floss, magnets. Uh, magnets are great to hang things up if you want to change them out for the season and also for needle minders. Um, these are little floss cards so I can put my floss on them. Floss drops. I ordered these to make some needle minders when I go to Canada so I can give them away and it's the state of Ohio and they're plain. I asked her not to put a buttonhole in them and she didn't and I can glue a magnet on those and give them away. Um, 
So I have a bunch of those in here. I have some charms. Look at that key. Somebody had asked me where I got this. This key came from Hobby Lobby, but it is just everything. And then um, some little, actually these are earring stuff, but there's some jump rings in there as well. These little containers came from the Dollar Tree and I store charms, um, lobster claws, jump rings. And some more of those Ohio's. These are all for making like charms, uh, stitch minders if I'm for knitting and things like that. And just like decorating stuff. Oh, and I also have in here, which I highly recommend this stuff. It's the Dollar Tree's version of E6000 and I have never had a problem with it. And I like that it comes in this little container. The big E6000s, I tend to have a problem with them um, drying up or getting stuck or popping a hole in them before I use them all. Sorry, my shirt's a mess today. Then I grabbed these baskets at the Dollar Tree before life ended. And then the front one, I have projects I'm actively working on. So upstairs that... This is the floss that goes to the Be Well and Stitch that I'm working on. And this is just my floss. This is all the leftover DMC and a couple um, classic, two classic color works. But the rest of this is DMC and I have a spreadsheet that just says all the colors. So before I go and purchase more, I look in here to see if there's any that I already have. So I do keep that. And then in the back one... I have kits, so I already made, this is all kitted up and ready to start, but I'm not ready to start it yet. So that one is next, and I even have them in order. This, oh, let me show you this. I ordered it, if you like needlepoint or cross stitch, and this is all ready, but I ordered this from Hands Across the Sea. And it's a sampler. Oh, I cannot wait. And the little girl was Sarah Spencer who created this. She made it. And this is an antique, it's a reproduction of an antique sampler from 1870. Yeah, so I got that online and then I have all, I don't have the floss in here. I just have, oh yeah, I do. I have, yes, I do. I have all the floss and the piece of fabric that I am going to um, create it on, which is just some coffee tea dyed linen, uh, 32 count linen. So that is in line to be started. I don't, know if, I don't think I have any more. Yes, I have a Halloween one that I wanna work on. Now this is a little one, so I can work on these in between. The look at that little pillow. It says boo, and then there's a bigger piece here. And there might even be, no, that's a different one. Um, so I got that, and this is by Hands On Design. And I have the accent piece that goes with it. I do not have the floss, but I do have a piece of 32 count linen to make it on. But I don't have the floss yet. And that's later in the year. That's for fall. And then I just have some patterns that I don't, I'm not, I don't have ready to do anything with. And then lastly, this will be my next start when I'm ready. I sewed this bag. Is that fabric not life? I love it. And I'm going to Canada. And this is my Ode to Canada project bag. And my Notions pouch that matches it. And what I love is the zipper is on the front. I love that. So, and this, I think I might have shown you this. I won't show you all the, well, I will show you this. This is what the floss uh, bags are for. So it keeps all of your colors together. Like this needed five skeins of this. And this floss was pretty expensive. This whole project was pretty expensive. And that's okay, but I want to take care of the materials. Like, I splurged on this a lot. This pack of floss was $50. Yeah, and the pattern was $25. But 
Look at what it's going to be. Oh, there we go. It's called the Kringles. It's a department store for Christmas. And I want to be able to put my name instead of Kringles, but we'll see. So that is the pattern. This is pretty big. It's going to take me quite a while. So I want to start it like this weekend, probably. I will start this on Friday, maybe. That would be fun. And I've already made all my working copies of it. And I have everything I need all the materials and the yarn, the fabric I dyed up is it looks like cement. It's a pearl gray. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. That's pretty good. But I wanted it to look like cement, like the outside of a building. And this is a big piece. So what I'm going to do is oh, I have some floss things in here. What I'm going to do when I start is at the bottom, I'm going to start in this corner and go all the way across so I know how much fabric I need and then I can cut off the excess fabric and sew the ends um, because this stuff frays pretty well and I'm going to be working on this for quite some time so I just went ahead and hemmed the ends and I'll give myself plenty of room to cut these off when I'm ready to have it framed. But this is a big piece of fabric. So what I'll do is do, like I said, I'll do my, the bottom row and make sure that's all perfectly counted out, give myself some excess inches and then cut it off and sew it up. So I'm not, you know, having all extra fabric. So that, and then this goes in here with it. I will probably still be working on this in September when I go to Canada, but we'll see. I definitely want to take that sampler to Canada with me to work. Oh, sorry. To work on as well as some easier, smaller things. So that is all the hobby stuff. Pretty much all the hobby stuff I've been working on while being quarantined at home. Plus, you know, housework and videoing and I keep busy. I'm not a sit still kind of per. what I did to this thing. There we go. I'm not a sit still kind of person, so I have to have lots of things. But thank goodness for stash because if I didn't have all this stuff, I would be really bored. And I'm enjoying the fact that I'm going through a lot of this stuff and using the things that I had on hand. Like everything here, except for a couple skeins of floss, I had per had already had before all this started. Except for this piece. It's a Q-snap, and it will hold that fabric when I start working on the big project. Because I, I don't want to put it on a um, hoop. I'm going to put it in this, so it can stay in this. So I'll snap it in. Hi, buddy. I think Alex is looking for us. All right, guys. Well, I got to roll, and I will talk with you later. And I hope you enjoy the tour of all my crafty stuff.